What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for another Top 10 Countdown, and today we're going to be counting down my 10 personal favorites by the UK rock band Arctic Monkeys. With the band officially releasing a new album in 2018, I felt that it was finally time for me to put out this list. I was waiting for the longest time to see if they would, and unfortunately, while none of the songs from that new record made the cut for this Top 10, there are some that did make the honorable mentions. Be sure to check the honorable mentions in the description down below, drop a like on this video, and leave a comment letting me know what you think of my personal list, and maybe leave your own top 10. Other than that, here we go, let's kick off the countdown. Alex Turner and company exploded onto the music scene in 2006 with whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. And at number 10 on my list, I have Still Take You Home. This is a track that is very cocky lyrically, but also has the musicianship to back it up. This one has a slam dunk to it with the guitars and just how stabby they feel, and the way that it kind of runs up when he's not actually singing. There's little breaks, and the guitars really just keep you coming back to it, head banging a little bit. And if you've listened to this album at all, you know that much of it, I would say actually most of it, is about his experiences out in the nightclub, nightlife, out in Sheffield, and everything like that. And you can hear his thick accent coming across on this cut as he talks to this girl and says, you know what, you don't know anything, I don't care about you really, but you know what, we're still gonna go hook up. And that's what this song is. It's bold-faced, it's putting it out there, but it's somebody who was young, wild, and free. Would you know It's amazing to see how much an artist or band can grow in just a short amount of time. And between the debut album in 06 and 2009's Humbug, I would definitely say that the Monkees changed lanes a bit. This track at number 9 is The Jeweler's Hands, and this is a finale to an album that had so many different things to offer us. So many different moments of drama, suspense, and tension. And here, there is a relationship crumbling, and it seems like just like another song that we'll get to on this list from this album, there's lying. There's things that are going on behind the scenes that we might not exactly know. And with Alex Turner, he's always great at using metaphors and allusions to actually build a world. And the instrumentation here is a little bit more sparse, but also hard hitting in the moments where it does kind of unleash. This is a perfect finale to a fantastic album and definitely an underrated song. She's a silver lining, climbing on my desire and I go crazy cause here is where I wanna be and satisfaction feels like a distant memory. Rollicking good times ensue on my number eight choice, Are You Mine? This is something from the very first time that I heard it, I knew that I was in love, and it was an easy shoe-in for making my top ten. The guitars and the bass here are extraordinary. I love how powerful the lead guitar in particular is, and it really just gets you into the groove of the song. Also, not to be unmentioned, is the drum performance from Matt. I think that he truly shines on this one. And also Alex Turner, just the way that he's able to stretch his voice, especially on the chorus, and then those high falsetto notes that act as a backing vocal to him. It's really fantastic just to see also how this song can build up and then unwind. It has moments of fury, but also ones of restraint. Library pictures of the quickening canoe the first of its kind to get to the moon Give me an eeny, meeny, miny, mo Or an ip, dip, dog shit, rock and roll Library Pictures from 2011, Suck It and See clocks in at number 7, and this is a song that has slowly risen to become one of my favorites. I initially would say that I didn't listen to Suck It and See all that much. In fact, it was probably the album that I listened to the most infrequently, and that's unfortunate. And I'll get to that when I do my ranking for the Arctic Monkeys albums. I'll talk more in depth then, but Library Pictures is a song that truly stands out to me. 
it absolutely shreds musically. There's a certain power to those guitars. And then the lyrical content is kind of intentionally confusing, throwing in some red herrings because Alex Turner said that he wanted to write a song like the Beatles as I Am the Walrus. And I can see how that writing style applies. And with Turner's music and his lyrics in general, it can be something that you really have to dive into because you're not gonna pick it up on first listen. But in particular with this, get ready to sit down with the lyrics and see if you can analyze and try and figure out what's going on. If not, this song still rips in the guitar, drum, and bass department, so you'll enjoy it regardless. Some want to kiss, some want to kick you. See you later, Innovator. At number six, we have Brian Storm, a fantastic, mesmerizing cut from Favorite Worst Nightmare. This is an album that truly changed my perception of the Monkees in general. I had heard a few of their songs early on and wasn't totally caught up as a youngster, but as I got older and matured, this music really just started to settle in with me perfectly. And Brian Storm was kind of leading the pack there, just being this pummeling, punishing track about somebody who is just so good, the man, quote unquote, if you will, the guy who's able to do anything. The guys hate him because he gets all the ladies, all the ladies love him. He just is successful and is ripping through like a storm, as the title would imply. The guitars here are great, and like I was talking about before with Alex's metaphors, they're definitely on another level on this song, and I just love the fast pace abilities of the band and how Turner's just able to push himself on a track like this. Over these skilled guitars, the fast pace rattling drums, and everything about this track comes together to make the perfect song. Some of you might not be as familiar with my number five choice, Dance Little Liar, but I'm about to tell you why you should be. This is an amazing song that got the attention of Josh Homme of Queens of the Stone Age. They had previously talked, but this is the demo that was sent off to him, and he was like, you have to come out to the desert and record this album, Humbug, with me. And they did that to amazing results. And you can definitely hear Hami's touches on this one in particular. And Alex Turner was really starting to just channel a different persona when it came to writing. And once again, like I was talking about with the jeweler's hands, you can definitely tell that he's writing about lies and other scenarios, a relationship that's starting to crumble because of the lies. And you can see this guy that's trying to dance his way out of the situation because it's easier to weave this web of lies rather than to come clean and tell the truth. And once again, the way that he's able to relate things like coming clean and then dirt and all these other things, he's able to tie together the imagery to make the perfect song. And this dark possession just kind of takes over you as you listen to a song like this. And the more you get into this, the more you really start to truly appreciate that instrumental break, the guitar solo, which was a rare thing for the Arctic Monkeys, really unleashes and just breaks this song out of its little tense state that it started in. And it truly gives you this feeling and sense of euphoria because it had been winding up, building up, and you were hoping that something was gonna come, and then there it is. Jamie starts to unleash on the guitar. What a song and what a narrative. I've got a lot of love and fond memories for my number four choice, Fluorescent Adolescence. This was in fact my first ever song from the Monkees. It came on the channel Fuse one day, the music video for it, and this was very different than the other kind of music that they were playing. This was a band from overseas, and I was automatically intrigued. I looked up a little bit more information what I was able to at the time. I remember going to the library and typing in Arctic Monkeys just because I was so confused on their name or why they would choose that, and that's where the love started to grow. This song just means a lot to me, and I love the fact that it is a little bit more relaxed than some of the other music on Favorite Worst Nightmare. This is a fantastic record, of course, and in general, this song always stood out to me because of its sharp songwriting and the storytelling between the characters and the narrative of the song. The music video is a little bit wild, and it's not exactly my favorite thing, but the clown aspect, 
can't help but get a few laughs out of that as there's a couple of chase scenes. Forever unfulfilled and can't think why Like a search for murder clues in dead man's eyes Prepare to let all of your anger and rage fly out the window as you start to headbang and rock out to my number three choice, This House is a Circus. I've always loved this one. It has such a great payoff to it, and the build-up here is not exactly something that builds up slowly, but still, there's so much payoff as the guitars just slam and hit you kind of like a wall of noise. It never really lets up. They're fast-paced, very clean, but also a driving bass force, and also Alex Turner is a beast vocally on this one. And I love the breakdown, the guitars that really start to layer, add in extra aspects. There's a point in the song that finally cycles back around to the start and hits on the opening notes once again, starts to add in a subtle creeping bass before breaking back down. And that's just one of my favorite moments in the Arctic Monkeys discography. I love that. It's so much fun to rock out to. Inching our way closer to the top, we have at number two, From the Ritz to the Rubble, a song about getting turned away at a club and then actually coming back and scoring anyways despite not being able to get in. That just goes to show you that's what happens when you deny Alex Turner entry. Anyways, this is a fantastic moment that really stood out to me as I revisited their discography. I had kind of forgotten about this song, but in the weeks leading up to these Arctic Monkeys videos that I'm working on, it truly just kept hitting me and kept presenting itself as something that was captivating and something that held my attention and that I wanted to genuinely come back to. Its guitars are absolutely ace, and the fact that a roaring vocal performance comes out of Turner on this one just furthers the fact that this is staying so high on my list. This is a moment that really just encapsulates everything that their debut, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not, is all about. This is impossible not to have fun to, and if you're not as familiar with the early Arctic Monkeys works, or perhaps you haven't revisited in a while, hopefully that little preview and my description help just tell you to go check it out again. Were you able to get it from my fantastic miming there? Well, if not, then come on. It just, it just rolled in the little intro clip before this. Topping my list of the best Arctic Monkey songs is 505 from Favorite Worst Nightmare. This song is majestic and means a ton to me not just because I was in a long distance relationship and kind of related to the lyrical content for a while, but because this song just is such a mood, such a feeling, such an overwhelming sensation. And up to this point in their discography, I never really felt that they wrote from this perspective, but Turner really just channeled something here. And he's talking about going back to 505 no matter what it takes. And that could be a hotel, it could be taking a plane to get to this person, wherever they are, whatever 505 is, it's basically just saying, in my mind, this is where this person is, this is where this girl is, and I have to get to her somehow. But things don't exactly play out to his advantage or exactly the way that he envisioned as the song continues on, and it's unfortunate, but still, there's so much to love here, and I love the little break before he goes into, but I crumble completely when you cry. Just a tumbling moment that just takes you down and honestly can bring a tear to the eye. It's overwhelming, endearing, and such a lovely cut from the Arctic Monkeys, and I feel it's easily their best. What did you guys think of my top 10 Arctic Monkeys songs? Keep in mind that this was all just my personal opinion. I'd love to know about yours tastefully and respectfully in the comments section down below. Please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. It's totally free, but if you want to support the channel and help the video keep coming, then please drop a donation on Patreon. It's the top link down below, and it does help longer videos and more complicated ones like this keep coming on a monthly basis. And of course, let me know in the comment section down below if you're excited for Arctic Monkeys Ranked.
There's a direct link to my Patreon page over in the annotation in the corner right over here, or you can tap right here if you want to see another Arctic Monkeys review. You can see the last top 10 countdown that I did by tapping right over here, or you can connect with me on social media at all of these links that you see here found in the description down below. Other than that, I'll see you very soon for more on ARTV.